Hey guys, Nigel here, Nigel's Modeling Bench, and no, you're not seeing things. This is the book, and uh, there's a lot of dust in there. Um, so, yes, here it is, all in black primer. Somebody asked me the other day if we're ever going to get this back. I've been promising for quite a while now, six months ago since I touched this. Um, I've been promising since then that I will get it done. So let's get it on the bench and let's get it done. Now, I don't know if it's going to get finished in this video, I don't know how far we're going to get, but basically, all we're doing is painting and final assembly. Now, if you remember back, I'm doing this scheme here. Make sure you're not all lost out. This is the um, Russian scheme here. So what's that from the um, 2007 Pushkin City, Russia? So the other options in the kit are the Ukraine version there with like the checkerboard pattern, which at the time, if I'd known I was going to get one of those Infini cutting mats, I might have done that one. That might have been a good experiment. But I've got this one here, which is um, Helsinki, Finland. So I'm going to go for this one. I love this scheme. Um, and I think it looks really cool because it, it's not actually like that. It's not really that defined. And I'm not going to mask it. I'm going to, um, well, I may do a sausage, uh, a, a, a sausage on it. We'll, we'll see. But I'm probably going to freehand it. Um, but the first thing I'm going to do is paint everything green because... I'm not 100% sure, but I'm 99% sure the whole thing would have been painted green and then the camouflage would have been applied afterwards. So that's what we're going to do here. And what I'm going to do, because the reason it's black is because I want it to have a black base. And what I'm not doing, I've got green paints. So I'm going to use the um, AK RC09 on a 098 Modern Russian Green. The colours they're calling up here don't actually, these are the, um, the main colours and they're basically AK. Uh, they're the ordinary AK bottle colours. These are the AK real colours, which are a far better paint, in my opinion. And um, I'm going to use this, but I'm going to go very, very thin. I'm going to thin it to death and then paint it on and let the black come through. And then we'll get a sort of shadow effect. Now, if you remember, I was very, very fussy about making sure we got black or dark green under every corner and crevice so that we didn't actually get this effect. Now, I'm just going to show you an area here. You go this is what you've got to try and avoid now you see you look at this here and this looks great until you start to tip it up and you start to look up under there and there you go there's your tan plastic and that's what we've got to avoid okay and that's why I spray through remember I painted all around all these hatches all underneath the edges of the hatches all inside here before the mesh went on all in behind there and everything is all painted black uh, so that we don't get this tan plastic showing through all under here and everything under the front you can see so um that's basically what i'm going to paint everything green i'm not, obviously not going to paint the missiles they can go away um paint everything green nice and thin and then we'll look at doing the tire colors and the masking and everything so um what i'll probably do is just give these a, a light green coat first of all then i'll spray the tire color and then we'll mask them off and we'll paint the final final color on them then because they've got um some of that yellowy colour, some are black. So, uh, but I want to get green on. I want to get green on everything first, and then go from there. So, let me get some paint mixed up, get the airbrush going, and then I'll come back when I've got most of it done, and I'll show you how I do this very, very light fading effect. Okay, so I'll show you now how I do this. So I've got the paint in the airbrush, uh, about seventy-five percent thinner, twenty-five percent paint. Um, I don't. I'm not a drop counter. I don't. I never do precise measurements. But you can see on here, I've painted this, and you can see the the black coming through in certain areas and it kind of gives you a, a very good depth effect and it really high you can see the detail around those bolt heads and then when you add a wash later on it really does make everything pop so um, what I'm going to do now is just around this hatch area on the back here I just want to show you how I do this um, so basically we're going to spray in from every angle make sure we get all the edges and stuff but I'm not I'm going to purposely not try and get in everywhere so let me just show you, rather than spray down into them, I'm just going to spray across the top. So we'll just, we'll just lightly go over the top there. You can see we've got the black coming through. Then I'll come from the other side, just lightly go over like that. Now I'm not going to try and actually make it all green. I'm, trying, I'm, I'm going to leave, leave some of it black, because remember this is an initial base coat. And we've got the black and the yellow to go over it. So you can see I'm just going over like this, covering the green, but I'm not trying to get in all the nooks and crannies. 
and I'm making sure that all the top areas, the bits that are on the surface, the tops of the hatches are all painted but I'm not trying to get in down in between them. Okay, so this, this is basically going to give us the effect we want. Okay, come across here, come across the back. Very lightly dusting the paint on. You can see I'm coming at like a 45 degree angle. There you go, you can see that that's the kind of effect you get. I don't know if you can pick that up. You can see it's a little bit blotchy. You can see black under the edges still. It's quite difficult to see actually in this light because honestly on the camera that those hatches look really blotchy with green and black but to the naked eye they don't. So very strange. And then the same when we come to do this large area on the top here. I mean the other thing you can do of course is your old like you do on aircraft you can do your your squiggly effect. You can come in even closer and do this kind of thing. And that's something people have been doing for years, black basing, and then you basically just go over that with a very heavily thin green and it will give you a, a kind of mottled effect like that. So, you know, there's loads of different ways you can do this. this I just want to get a dusty green coat on here. And if you try and do this with the paint too thick, you'll get a very grainy finish. And the paint won't stick because it will dry before it hits the model. Notice I'm not coming on and off the airbrush, just staying on it. Feeding the paint in and out, staying on the air, feeding the paint in. If you haven't got an airbrush, go and get one. They're, they're, they're really cheap these days, you don't need to buy the best. Um, you know, if you can afford it, then get the best. But uh, you know, the cheaper Chinese ones on the market these days, they're adequate. This is an Iwata, it's got to be nine years old now, coming up ten years old. Um, I've never replaced a single thing on it, just keep it clean. I see, I mean, I don't. Give it a particularly good life, it gets abused. So yeah, as I say, if you can afford the best, or the, the better ones, you know, Harder Steinbeck, Iwata. And there we go, we've, got, we've now got some green paint on here and it's just, It's just it's not just green it's, it's it's got some sort of life to it it's got some depth to it so I'm going to go on and do the rest of this now I'll do the same effect all on the side all down the sides of the hull and um, and I'll come back when it's all done and there we go and believe me this looks a lot more effective on the camera sorry not more effective the effect looks a lot more stark on the camera than it does to the naked eye I'm looking at this now and it looks like dark green with some blotches of black showing through. On that camera, <laughs> it looks really, really blotchy. In fact, I quite prefer the look on the camera. So basically, yeah, you can see we've gone all around here. And if I can just get up in here and show you the detail, the way it picks out the detail, it's um, it's lovely. You, you can see it in there. Now, at the moment, it all looks a bit sort of basic and stark because it's just two colours, black and green. But believe me, once we start to get some camouflage colours in there, and then we start to get some washes in there and stuff and filters and dirt. Uh, I'm going to go underneath with um, with uh, some scraps of green paint rather than waste the, the good AK stuff underneath. But I do always, a lot of people don't bother doing the backs of their wheels. I've missed two wheels there. Um, they don't bother doing the backs of their wheels. Um, I always do. I do the backs of the wheels. You can see there, backs of them are done. Um, 
you know, inside the sprockets and everything. I always do inside the sprockets, underneath, all in behind the suspension. I always do it all. And also, whenever I build a model, I always do the upper runner tracks, even if it's got side skirts. That's what I like to do. It's just, just the way I roll. So there we go. That's all of that done. So um, let me have a think about get how we're going to go into the next stage now. Right, here we are 24 hours later and I've basically gone round now. I've done the tyres in the um, Mr Hobby H77 tyre black, which is a lovely, lovely paint. The actual MRP tyre black is also a lovely colour. And just as a note for you guys, it sticks really well to vinyl tyres. So one to remember there. So I've gone round, done all these, um, all the, the uh, seam clean up on all these parts here, all the moulding seams. Um, so those are all done. I've also, as you can see there, I've painted the mirror which is in here so uh, yeah gloss black and then some alclad chrome and then some um, um, aqua gloss on top of there so I don't know if you can see that's it's not too bad it's not fantastic but uh, it's not too bad I think the, the black could have been a bit thicker I mean it would have given it more of a, a shine but never mind um, so yeah, we've got all the basic green done now. This I've done with a, uh, is it 74194, I think. Um, a Vallejo Air, uh, Model Air. And uh, that is actually a zinc chromate interior green. So that's the, um, the interior green for US aircraft and stuff. So quite happy with that. That's over a black primer. So as you can see, again, I've gone for the blotchy look. Um, it's got a bit of a sheen to it. It's going to get a matte varnish because everything used to be absolutely dead flat. So... I'll probably use some of the AK Ultra Flat Varnish on that. So once that's dry, I'll mask off around here. A lot of people, when they build these, they only go up to this line here. But actually, that is all part of one unit. So I think whatever colour this is painted, that would also be that part there. You can see where the hinges are there. That part would be the same colour. So a lot of people just paint this part because that part then glues on. Um, but no, the, I think the actual the actual split is here where my finger is now. So basically, uh, that's what I'm going to do. So I'll mask that up when the paint's dry. I'm going to give some proper weathering and fade in and really knock that back. And as I say, a very, very flat varnish on it to give it a real horrible dull use and um, whole look. Um, a whole look, a dull look. So I've got BWG here. This is black, white and green. Um, so obviously, when we look at the colour callouts, if we believe these, then we've got the... The black white and the green wheels so you can see here we've got one two white wheels there and we've got one two white wheels there so i've got down here i've got the four white wheels and we've got three return rollers there and one of the idlers is also white so i need to put one of those in that pile so uh, yeah we'll add that one in and then the other idler on the other side is green both the sprockets are green so there we go um, so I'll, I'll get those painted now and I'll use this disc method to paint them So basically you can see I've masked off around it and all I'll do is I'll put that in there like that and then paint the wheel Now I've got the window up and everything. I've got my, my um, spray booth with me, but I've decided I'm going to give these a go um, I've never really used them before. I think I used this to do the missiles didn't I? I can't remember now But we've got our base green now and we can think of that as like a primer and I'm going to use these. Um, basically, I've never used them. They're not even the right colours according to this. But, you know, blue black is basically like a NATO black. Then you've got this yellowish, as well, greyish yellow, which is that colour there. And then the green. Now, these colours, I've looked online and trying to match up these colours. I mean, some of them are positively olive drab colour. When you compare those two colours, I mean, they're just miles apart. So... Really, I don't, I, I don't think there is a specific colour. And probably being Russian, there's probably many different colours. And then there's fading and weathering and, and everything. So I'm just going to go with these three rather than bother buying any more paint. Um, and also, I just want to give them a go. And plus, they're not too smelly. So I'm going to thin them with um, Vallejo airbrush thinners, which will thin them well. You've got to be very careful with these bottled paints, such as the AK. The, well, these are AK. Um, and the Viejos, if you put any acrylic thinners near them, most acrylic thinners, they just it just turns them into cottage cheese. I've also gone through and cleaned the airbrush through properly so we don't get any contamination there. Um, I believe the UMP thinners thins every acrylic paint out there, but some thinners you need to be really, really careful of. So uh, I'm sure somebody will comment below and say, you can use this, you can use this, you can use this, and that's all great 
information for everyone else. Thank you, and, and for me. So um, I'm going to get on and do some painting here, maybe film a little bit of it, and we'll go from there. Okay, right, so I've attempted to use this paint. Um, I've used the green on here, which went absolutely fine, I guess, because I was going over green. This stuff is absolute crap. Um, it's just... I, I don't know if I can show you. I mean, I've got it in here. I've got it neat. I've tried thinning it and it doesn't seem to make a difference. It just becomes totally opaque. But if I can show you on here, let's get the model out of the way because I think I know what's going to happen. I've tried painting this, this bit here and I'll show you what happens. I'll do an area here. Okay, I'll lightly bring the paint in. As you can see, there's nothing. We've got a slight amount. I'm still pulling back. I'm still pulling back. I'm still pulling back. There you go. Flooded great big splodge of paint so that is going in the bin as is that one as is that one absolute garbage so um i think i'll just chuckle the rest of those i've got those ak meng paints in the bin and i'll use the ak real color uh, go to some decent paint okay so after about 20 minutes of trying to clean all that gunge out of the airbrush that's all done and we've now got the ak real color rco 99 and this is russian grayish yellow I've thinned it roughly 60, 40, 60% thinners uh, to 40% paint with the um, AK compatible thinners. And I'm just going to show you how much better this is. Now I need to get my guide. You need to be really careful here, guys. If you are fairly new to the hobby, you need to be really careful with these guides because they tell you the colours, where the colours go and everything. But like if you look here, for example, on this front corner, you're showing the, what I call, I'm going to call it green, white and black, okay? The, they're showing the white there going up onto that corner okay which is that corner there and that corner there is actually black so you know there's no white here at all so um they need to be really careful with what they're what they're showing it's the same with aircraft they'll often show you the a band of green going over the fuselage and on the other side it's brown so you need to be really careful when you start following these guides but um what i'm doing now is just going to add this white line here this white line, I'll use the end of the airbrush just to show that one there. So it's going to sort of start roughly just past the centre and then it's going to come along and over the edge. And then th this bit here is going to be onto green and then we've got black. So we don't need to worry too much about when we come down here. So we're going to start in this corner and lightly bring in. In fact, I can't talk when I'm airbrushing because it's, you can't hear me. So. Okay, so there's the rough outline we're looking for. You can see how much better this sprays. So we're going to come in and get a nice sharp edge along here. And just gently filling in to sharpen that edge up a touch. And there we go, we've got our roughly sharp edge. And just come along and fill in. use a kind of black basing method to get a
a kind of mottled effect because I'm sure these weren't sprayed with much precision. Uh, so, right, come down here. I say this edge doesn't matter because we've got black on that edge, so it doesn't really matter if it's a bit all over the place or whatever, we just want to get the white on there really. You can see I've got a bit of a heavy wet patch there. Just go over that lightly and blend it in. There we go. If we want to, we could always come in there with the green, make a heavily mixed, heavily thin mix of green and just tidy these edges up. See this paint is going a little thick. You just don't get the dustiness around the edge, that's when the paint is too thick. There we go. When we put a filter on it, it'll all sort of blend it anyway. So I'll go on and get the rest of this done, and then I'll come back when we start the black. Here we are, about I think about two hours later, we're finally done with all the uh, what I'll call the white. And um, yeah, it's, uh, I ended up taking the tip off the airbrush to try and get tighter lines. Um, I think I'm going to go in afterwards with a real thin mix of green and just, you know, basically go in and uh, tidy everything up. Because in here, for instance, where I couldn't get in too close, it's very difficult to get a tight edge. So with the tip off, I can get in there really close and um, see if we can just tidy it up a bit. Maybe do a bit of brush work. Uh, I painted around here as well and didn't mask that very well, so I'm going to have to go over that again with the green. But that's not a problem. I haven't gone underneath because from the pictures I've seen, it looks like they didn't, they didn't actually paint underneath anything. So, um, you know, basically just leave it green underneath. So uh, that's that. Now the next thing we've got to do is the black. Okay, so here we are with all the, the paint work done and everything, and I've, I've slipped the wheels on there on... Um, they're on poly caps, so they're easy to take on and take off and put back on. Um, I've got a bit of an issue, guys. If you look back at part, I think it was part two, I talked about the idlers and actually putting a plastic insert in here to tighten up the fit and to get the idlers um, fitting in there better. So here are the idlers, and here is the hull, but the bit that goes in between, I don't have. Um, these parts here, A58, A58 on both sides, I don't have them, they're gone. Now I can see them in, I think it's let's say part two or part three, I've got them there and then they don't feature again. So I don't really know what's going on, I've lost them. Um, if anybody has this kit unfinished and they've got those parts and they can send me one so I can make a resin copy, I'd be really, really grateful because... I'm buggered. I can't finish this model without those parts and I'm certainly not going to buy another kit just for those two. So um, I could only think I've put them in a box somewhere that I mean I, I tend to use these little old dog food trays um, and you can see I've got the mirror in there and there's all the metal pins and everything for putting all back together and I would assume that everything would be in there but it's not. So I've also got one here that you can see with the tracks. Um, it's got the tracks in there, but they're not in with the tracks, so God only knows where they are. Um, so yeah, if anybody can help me out, I'd be really grateful, or I can't finish this model because I don't have those parts. So or, or, either that, or I could knock something up out of, you know, just make something out of a piece of sprue or something. But anyway, um, if anyone can help me, I'd be really, really grateful. So... Um, or if somebody indeed has got this kit and they've half built it and they've given up, you know, and they've thrown it away. If they still have those parts, I'd be really, really grateful. I'll pay you for them. I'll pay the postage and everything. So uh, moving forward, um, let's start looking at some decals. Now, I want to try this. This is um, Ed from Premium Hobbies down in Western Supermare has sent me this stuff here. And this is called Decal Fixer. I've done a translation from the Japanese writing. And basically it says it's just put it on, put the decal on and then remove the excess. 
um, it does it says it doesn't soften the decal so or decal so should I say so basically I want to try that I also want to try this this is a decal squeegee and I haven't tried this before I've just done a sample a, a scrap um, decal on, a, on a, my scrap wing um, and it works really well it's like a really soft sort of silicony rubber material and you kind of roll it over like you would with a with a, with a cotton bud but it just pushes the air, the air out rather than absorbing anything and it appears to work really well so let's do these large decals on the side first of all we've only got a couple so we've got the numbers on the sides here which are basically these two numbers here just check you're not glossed out so we've got a number there and a number there and then we've got some um, information tag or data tags to go across the top here there's one data tag there and that is literally it so um so basically not a lot to do at all really so I think we'll put these in here and I think what I'll do here with this one is cut this in half and I wouldn't normally use a knife on decals as you all know but um, when it's not touching the actual decal itself then uh, it doesn't really matter so we'll put them there just leave them there for when we need them I'm just going to give this a feel to see if they're loosened up yet yeah, nope I'm going to give them another dip this warm water I've got here just a drop of warm water and then so what I'll do is I'll get this decal fixer out so if I was putting these decals onto a wing section with rivet detail and stuff I think I would be tempted to um, to not use this I think I'd use my set and sole but um, because this is a flat surface it's going on so I'm going to give it a go because it does seem to make the decal pull down very nicely but doesn't make it conform so we'll put that down like that and then we can use our tweezers to kind of centralize the decal up Now my experience with main decals as I've said before with the uh, little whippet I made I, I think they're brilliant so this tool you've got a flat on the end so I can just squeeze it down and you can see it's squeezing out all the moisture but it's also removing it but it's not soaking it up it can't soak it up it's not absorbent you can soak it like that and it's gone the moisture's gone um, I did actually show this in a review I did a few weeks ago but didn't actually try it and uh, I'm really impressed if you look how that's gone down you can see it's gone down beautifully so impressive stuff let's do the other side let's get our decal fixer I say again this is this is from um, premium hobbies down in Western Supermare where you can get 10% off if you use the code NMB10 Nigel's modeling bench 10 but unfortunately he doesn't ship to the USA which is very unfortunate because a lot of you guys love this stuff love his um his premium designs sander holders and stuff so we go so that's there in place so I'm just going to take this and I'm going to go from the center and I'm going to roll out roll out and this little tool is absolutely brilliant it's almost like it's absorbent but it can be absorbent it's it's like a it's like a silicon it's not even wet it's strange so there we go so that's that one down just give that another little um, push down there we go so we'll see how they look when they've um, settled down if I need to I'll put a bit of set uh, micro sole on there just to soften them up a bit pull them down and then this one here this little data tag is going to go I think basically what this stuff does this decal fixer I think it's basically like a, a an aid to getting it to go down um, it's like an, an, an additional adhesive if you like so we'll get that in fact I'm going to get this decal off on the tweezers and then just stick it down like that there we 
we go, that's down. Just square it up. Oops, throw my tools across the floor, let's grab a cotton bud. I've just thrown that squeegee thing across the room. And there we go, so I'll get the rest of them done, I'll come back. Okay, so there we go, I've, um, I've actually put a drop of microsol on them now, um, just to make sure they pull down, because there is some detail under that one, there's like a latch or something there, and then these here, this one, and these four along here sort of go on to a, um, a raised sort of placard. Um, so I wanted to make sure they pull down. So I've just put that on there. I'm just going to leave them to set now. So then from this video, we'll also know if the microsole works okay with this decal fixer. I think this is like a kind of glue that kind of helps the decal go down, really, really pull down. And it could be our answer for silvering um, on matte paints. So I'll do some tests with that, I think. Um, appears to work really, really well. Right, so we are basically at the end of this video because... What we're going to be doing next is kind of assembling all this together. But before I do anything else, I need to sort out what I'm doing about these idlers. Because if I can't sort something out, there is absolutely no point in doing any more work on this. Um, it's not a cheap kit. If it was a £20 kit, I'd go and buy another one and make a mould of the parts and then sell the kit on. But it's like 60 quid this kit. So I'm... I've never in my life done this and as you all know I build a lot of kits I kind of start a lot and don't finish them and like they go back in their box I have never lost parts from an unfinished kit I can't believe I've done this but um I've done it so there we go thanks for watching guys um this has been part 10 I think <laughs> it's been so long um part 11 will be up to you very very shortly if I can get something sorted with these idlers bye for now